Welcome back. They don't call it March Madness for nothing. Alabama stuns the number one seed, North Carolina, in a 90, uh, an 89 to 87 nail biter while Clemson gets the upset over Arizona. Well, fans are certainly enjoying this year's Sweet 16 matchups. A growing number of Americans are participating in sports betting. Well, my next guest says Americans are taking the wrong kinds of risks in gambling on sports. Let's bring in Manhattan Institute senior fellow Allison Schrager. Allison, welcome. Thanks for having me. Um, what is this unnecessary risk that these Americans are taking as they gamble on sports? Well, because say, it's allowed in more than half the country. I wouldn't say it's unnecessary. I'd say just the wrong kind. Because I find it remarkable that since the Supreme Court made it possible to gamble in states, you know, it's taken off a lot. And, you know, we're making it a lot easier, bet gambling a lot more accessible. But at the same time, we're making like healthy, productive risks like moving or starting a business much harder. Mm -hmm. So it's like, why are we encouraging sports gambling so much while discouraging more productive, healthy risk taking? I'm assuming it's because the average sports better is just wagering a small amount or am I completely wrong? I know it all adds up to like yeah. eye popping numbers, but the average the average person is. But there are uh, there are statistics that show that there's a big growth in problem gamblers, particularly among young people. Yeah. Like it's kind of shocking that the universities themselves are advertising sports gambling are to, they really to their students so um, well they have to pay like those ninety thousand dollar tuition somehow. Yeah, exactly <laughs> hoping to get lucky and states want the tax revenue yeah but uh the question is is you know i i'm i'm, I'm not like saying we should outlaw sports gambling i'm too much of a libertarian to say that but mm -hmm. like do we have to make it so easy where it's an app on our phone it can do in-game gambling right and and then stories like this i mean the mlb superstar shohei otani and the nba player jonte porter both wrapped up in controversies concerning betting on their own sports. So we'll pull up a full screen. You can see just how much revenue mm -hmm. is being brought in. This was just last year, if we have those numbers. I think it's about $150 billion. They'll pull it up. Mm -hmm. um, when you look at these high-profile stories, what's the risk? There it is, about $150 billion. Yeah, well, I mean, not that any, either of them have been found guilty of throwing a match, but in the countries where there's more pervasive sports gambling, mm -hmm. match fixing is actually a really big concern. So I think that's the other concern people have is not only problem gamblers, but that match fixing could become a bigger issue. And that just makes the game less interesting for everyone. But it's kind of fun too, right? At least it is. talk about, see where the scandal is. It is. It's kind of fun. We still talk about the baseball fixing in, what, 1919? Pete Rose, I know. Yeah. Um, Let's switch gears radically and talk about the state of Social Security. Mm -hmm. um, we're going to play sound. It's what Ch uh, Treasury Secretary Janet Yellen has said about it and what President Joe Biden has said about mm -hmm. it recently. Watch here. The president doesn't have a plan. He has principles. He wants to work with Congress to find a way um, to protect Social Security and extend its solvency beyond 2034. Now, if the president wishes, to, I have a better idea. I'll protect Social Security and Medicare. Instead of giving the very wealthy another two billion, two trillion dollar tax cut, I'm going to make sure the wealthy begin to find that pay their fair share of taxes to sustain this program. I mean, the wealthy are just shouldering everything in this country under President Biden. And also, just like the numbers don't <laughs> add up. I mean, yeah. suppose that tomorrow we got rid of the cap on you have your payroll. On. So you would everyone who makes more than 168,000 pays the full 12.4 percent on all of their income now. That would be an enormous tax increase, like a 12 percentage point marginal tax increase, which would make most people pay. Anyone, even like sort of upper middle class people, be, they would be paying like 60 percent plus tax rates. That would still not make Social Security whole. So even so, let alone saying, oh, just people who make 400,000 or more are going to pay for all Social Security? I mean, that's absurd. That's not going to happen. Well, but 400000 or more isn't the very rich in no. his eyes, or is it? What's his cutoff? Well, that is his cutoff. It used to, Democrats used to say is 250000 was the cutoff of people who would never, who would only pay for everything. Now it's gone up to 400000 mm. But as I said, you would have to, like, tax these people, like, 90% to pay for Social Security. It's just like completely not feasible. Plus, because they have a million other things they want to pay for. Yeah. So, I mean, they would effectively be blowing it all on Social Security. And the question is, is when we could just do things like, I mean, you have to do a lot of different things, but things like encouraging people to work longer. Yeah. I mean, why is that off the table? We're staring down a problem and there needs to be other solutions. Allison, thank you. Thanks very for much. having me.